Boom, what's up everyone? Welcome to Simulation. I'm your host, Stalin Sakian. Very excited to continue being doing interviews at COFES, the Congress on the Future of Engineering Software, for our second annual partnership with them. We are now speaking with Pete Wells. Hello. Hello. Thanks for coming on to the show. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Very excited to chat. Pete, along with a, t a ton of other things, he's on the board of directors at COFES Institute for the last two and a half years. He's also, for the last 17 and a half years, is the president and CEO of Smart to Market. And prior to that, 18 and a half years at HP doing regional sales manager. And he's also for 20, 23 years as a volunteer firefighter, which is so cool. Like you were saying earlier, completely different part of, of neural circuitry. Mm -hmm. And this is so interesting to be able to smash together things like <clears throat> different life essences together into, into some, um, into you, what is your life. Now, Pete, let's talk about this, so your journey. Mm -hmm. You know, how did you pick up your interests as a kid and start molding into who you are today? Yeah, good, good question. And, and uh, um, you know, a, a lot of it comes down to, uh, I think, curiosity. Um, as a small child, uh, I probably got in trouble more than not for taking things apart and not being able to put them back together again. I always wanted to know how things worked. And uh, I think that curiosity drove me to uh, look into you know, what I wanted to do when I went into to college. Honestly, going into college, I didn't really have a, a, a clear plan of where I was gonna go after I got out of school, but uh, that's, that's uh, definitely a big part of what led me into uh, engineering. I got my degree in electrical engineering uh, at uh, Georgia Tech, met some great people, um, and uh, the door opened from there, uh, just at, those, at that time period. Uh, it was a great time to be an engineering discipline. Uh, I remember we had uh, we had the pick of the litter when it came to interviews and, and companies we got to meet with versus, you know, not long after I was out of school, uh, they went to a um, uh, a lottery system where you know, you know they selected you know, some number of people that actually got to interview with with companies. Uh, we went through the list and just picked the ones we wanted to talk to, and it was it was a great time to, you know, to to go after that. So um, I don't know. If you want to get into the yeah, next yeah. stage or not? The, yeah. Well, this is well, this is good. I want to just take a quick a quick uh, moment to say that the amount of 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 young people that we know that were exposed to um, tinkering at young ages, and mm -hmm. like you said, taking things apart, understanding how it works, mm -hmm. putting things back, trying to sometimes put things back yeah. together, hoping to know how it works. Oh, <laughs> and having uh, you know mentors, <clears throat> parents involved in in, in helping um, with that process is so critical to a lot of the engineers mm -hmm. that we know today. So I'm glad that that was one of your um, your really powerful young moments. Yeah. yeah, and and I'm honestly envious of uh, kids today that have you know all the robotics programs and uh, the technology that's out there to play with today. Uh, uh, is, is pretty cool. Um, yeah. And yeah, that's part of what, uh, you know, stepping way ahead to COFES, uh, you know, we look at the opportunity that we have as a community to get people interested in technology. Uh, you know, arts are important too, uh, but, you know, today's problems, tomorrow's problems are completely, you know, beyond complex and uh, having solutions to those problems is gonna take a bunch of smart people, that next generation that are, you know, gonna be tackling those. Yes, yes. So, and the, we're we're really fortunate to have like you were saying like things like first robotics or these really great engineering simulation softwares that we're able to now use to really um, enable the maximal amount of human creativity to 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 come into play mm -hmm. and solve these challenging problems that we're facing. So then how did how did the work and it was Georgia Tech Georgia Tech Georgia yeah. Tech how yep. did how did you, you know, pick up, you know, post Georgia Tech where you went? Yeah, so uh, uh, that was also by luck more than design. Uh, had a chance to interview with a number of companies. Uh, you know, back in those days, they did plant trips. They'd fly you know, cross country, you know, to all these great places. Uh, uh, I remember General Dynamics uh, in uh, in Texas was building the F-16, uh, first fly-by-wire uh, uh, military jet at the time, and so really cool technology. Uh, it happened to be about a week before my interview with Hewlett Packard that I went to General Dynamics and that and, uh, was a lot of really neat people. I love the people there, they're great. The planes were so cool. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I would have loved to have been, you know, uh, I would have been an in-flight test engineer. Uh, but everyone I talked to was bragging about these brand new HP 
uh, automated <laughs> test systems they're getting, right? And, and it's like, oh, well, HP, I know I was familiar with them, but uh, uh, um, this was like the, you know, they were talking about that more than they were, you know, the, the job at, at General yeah. Dynamics. And uh, so I interviewed with HP and, and really uh, uh, the company um, is a great company, the people, you know, that I got to work with, great start to a career. Uh, I did start out in, uh, in technical uh, sales and consulting. Mm -hmm. And um, that uh, uh, era, um, I was always interested in graphics. I just love, you know, graphics. Again, if the stuff that's available today, I would have just been, you know, going crazy about. But back then, uh, you know, um, we had one graphics lab in school. Um, uh, there wasn't a general graphics curriculum in school yet. Uh, and uh, I took advantage of you know wh whatever I could, but uh, HP had some really cool graphics, you know, on on uh, some of the earlier desktop computers. Uh, it was it was you know it was a lot of fun. I just had a real passion for it, and uh, that led me into a part of HP that uh, developed uh, engineering software. Mm -hmm. And uh, from that point forward, I was uh, always plugged into that that part of the business uh, to a point where HP at uh, one point had a product that uh, was called Solid Designer, it was a 3D modeling system uh, that uh, they decided to split off as a separate company that became CoCreate. <laughs> and uh, I was a part of that launch, uh, director of marketing, uh, taking this you know entity out it from HP, a very large company, into the time about a 600 person smaller company uh, with this great line of products. And um, I got to do a lot more things as a director of marketing in that role um, that I would have probably never done in the career at HP. I mean, at HP, you have great resources and you can depend on you know this, this breadth of, of talent that, you know, that is focused in PR, content development. Uh, you know, you're looking at the marketing and, and all the parts of HP, uh, this smaller company, CoCreate, uh, we had to do a lot of things, you know, yet every one of us, you know, wore many hats. Yes, yes. And so that was a great experience and probably the foundation that, that uh, helped me think about, you know, starting my own company. Yes. Uh, and that was a good swing for you from a, how many thousands, 10,000 people? Uh, or? the time, uh, what, HP? Yeah. Was, the time with HP was about 40,000. This 40, was before 000. they, before they bought, uh, EDS and some of the other acquisitions. Down to what, like 10 people? Or no, no, no. So, so the, uh, co-create, uh, was about 600 people. 600, 600, yeah. 600. Okay. Yeah. That's still a massive, yeah, decrease, but that's still wearing a lot of hats. And so, okay, now, now you know, you were explaining to this, just about this a little bit ago, and I just want to hear your perspective on it. When you're, when you're there, when you're joining, you're hearing oh, so many of the people talking about HP's goods, and then you're able to be there mm -hmm. at the time, and this was what, what year was this, 80? 81, I 81. joined HP, yeah. Okay, so you're 81, you're there, this is really the personal computing revolution. Yeah. And so you're there, and then you're also really enjoying um, graphics as well at the same time. So tell us about just that, like the coolness of that time period and what you were learning in the distributing the personal computing out to businesses and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, so uh, um, it was pretty cool. I mean, literally in college, there was not a, a, a class that was a standard class. There was a special class that you got to play with these Tektronic vector displays, you know, it was, you know, amazing how quickly the technology, you know, evolved in, the, in my first few years at HP. But I remember, uh, you know, getting out of college, I, you know, I got a, uh, I got a you know, car, I got rid of my old beat up car after, you know, uh, completing college, and that was a big step. Uh, but then I remember putting in my car, because we got to take these computer systems home with us, you know, uh, they, they, the more we played with them, the more we knew, and, you know, HP encouraged that. And I remember uh, at the time my car was, was worth maybe $8,000. And at the time, the graphics workstation, uh, which was, you know, had a 12 inch display. I mean, this is, you know, nothing by today's standards, but it was a color graphics workstation, the 9845. Um, and uh, you know, at the time, uh, bit slice processing and all this, you know, at the time, it's like, this is amazing stuff. The, uh, the cost of that workstation was about $80,000. And so I'm thinking, it's like, okay, so I've got an $8,000 car, and I'm I'm putting this $80,000. It's like, it was a little scary for you know at yeah, the time yeah, a yeah. young whippersnapper out of college. Yeah. You know, I uh, was uh, a little concerned just kind of taking off with that much money in the back of my car or something like yeah. that. happened to it? But anyway, uh, that that uh, quickly evolved. I me mean, every year, there were just amazing new developments that uh, that came out. Uh, 
the early CAD stuff that uh, that we were working with, HP worked with you know a number of software companies. Uh, the the earliest ones were actually mini computer based with you know RS232, uh, you know dumb terminals were the graphics uh, systems that, that were you know basically running the, the CAD systems back then, and um, and then that evolved you know within a few years into you know what we got to know today and you know the more modern uh, technology of wireframe going into surface modeling and then solid modeling and and the compute resources were able to you know, actually deal with that but uh, yeah you know looking back on it, it uh, you know Moore's law and everything else yeah. when it comes to compute power but just really that the, the uh, ability to model and create things in a computer yes. uh, just again was just was a passion I loved it and, and uh, that's why I stuck with it I guess to your story about taking the eighty thousand dollar computer into an eight thousand dollar car is just <laughs> it's a big testament to like now there's no computers that are more expensive than the cars yeah it's so yeah or maybe one quantum computer right but it's just crazy that 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 that's the Moore's law. That's what's happened in decreasing mm -hmm. the amount of cost, increasing mm -hmm. computational capacity. Then, <clears throat> okay. So now that we're able to, you know, leverage all this computational capacity to to take all these creative ideas and model and build, and that's very exciting. I want to know, you know, these kind of things happen at the same time. Smart to market and the volunteer firefighting kind of happened simultaneously. How did those two things? Well, happen? so um, I. Uh, Moved to Colorado with HP uh, to become a part of this uh, group that was creating, you know, these CAD solutions, and uh, and then you know a few years after that is when they decided let's split off and create a, a separate company. That opened the door for uh, our products to actually be run on Silicon Graphics at the time, you know, which was a big competitor to HP. Uh, would would not have been a you know possibility as we were part of HP. Mm -hmm. HP saw us as a you know a way to sell more workstations. And so um, that was a really cool step to, you know, really, in a way, just launch this new company called CoCreate and, and to be a part of that. Uh, and again, great people. I've been, you know, fortunate and blessed to have the, the people in my life. So again, more by luck than design, I think. I just uh, 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 was really lucky uh, to have that part of it. I don't know, things would be a lot different if, I, if, if people that influenced and, and were part of my journey uh, uh, had been, uh, you know, something different. But uh, Moving to Colorado, I uh, you know moved from you know a the time I was living in an urban environment in Atlanta, Georgia, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know had a lot of friends there. But I loved Colorado. Every time we go on business trips to Colorado, which yeah. is where HP had a big plant, uh, you know skiing obviously was a big thing. Yeah, yeah. First time I went there in the summertime, it's like holy cow, the weather is incredible. Yes, you know, yes, just yes. if you like being outdoors, it's it's uh, yeah. just an, a great place to be. So I went from a very urban environment, you know. To out working at the uh, one of the HP factories in, in Colorado, uh, and then living in a very suburban environment up in the hills, essentially. Mm -hmm. uh, people used to joke. They say, "Yeah, you know, I don't know how you commute that every day. It's like a half-hour drive." Uh -huh. I'm thinking when I was in Atlanta, I'd have you know a 40-minute drive on a good day, and if traffic was bad, it could be you know two or three hours. Yeah. And uh, so 30 minutes driving through the hills around lakes and you know and, and it's you know it's like it was therapeutic yes uh, but where we live is is also um, pretty remote and uh, yeah. uh, they had a volunteer fire station there and uh, so uh, I, I wasn't one I always like to you know tinker and play with things and you know curiosity if it led me into engineering yeah. I wasn't one thinking I want to be a fireman when I get older um, as a kid but uh, it's been a um, it was more a matter of utility, really, to you know be contributing in, in the environment that we're in. You know, it's all volunteer, uh, yeah. and it uh, it's been uh, actually an amazing learning experience. It's, you know, a whole different side of your brain. Uh, we're we're uh, wildland fire only. We don't do structures. We don't go into burning buildings, which is fine with me. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But the other thing, which has wow. been a lot of fun and, and actually personally rewarding, is. Uh, part of our training is also uh, emergency medicine. So, oh, cool! Becoming an EMT was yes. uh, yes. it's kind of cool. It's like going back to I went back to college again, you know, and yeah, I was yeah. in my 40s and and uh, uh, got my EMT and and uh, mm -hmm. um, and just yeah, I mean that's the kind of thing where you know literally you can save lives and and uh, and knowing that kind of stuff is you know just great just from a personal perspective. Yes, yes. You know, friends and family. You know, yeah. You never yeah. know when and what you might. 
need to, to know. That's right. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's cool that there's the EMT training also comes with uh, the volunteer fire training. This transition to to Colorado was is actually a major one then, um, but the huge, huge. And then of course you're describing at the same time how as you get more and more into um, the the the, spl- the split for with HP, it was co co create co create co create yep. co create. That kind of also gave you a little bit of the entrepreneurial roots that you wanted for smart to market. Yep. So teach us about kind of that part now. Yeah. So uh, you know, getting my hands into a lot of different aspects of of marketing and business, uh, you know, through the co create journey, um, uh, was part of it. The other part was uh, just this continued. Uh, like we're here at COFES, a uh, connection with uh, a very tight community. Uh, you know, we, you know, you go to events and, and, and meetings and, and, you know, the, the, the people, the faces are the same, the name badges change sometimes. Yeah. But uh, it was, uh, you know, another part I think I really enjoyed besides, you know, graphics and, and you know, the engineering type stuff. Uh, uh, the community that we have is just uh, amazing people. and. Uh, uh, you know, coming to COFES is over the years uh, before it was, you know, donated as a nonprofit, the COFES Institute. Um, you know, you feel very small when you come to this event. Does the the brain trust that that uh, is a part of COFES is uh, is inspiring? It was always just a, a great uh, great event. But the the people that I connected with uh, in that journey with CoCreate, you know, and the you know editorial folks that are you know writing stories about new technology and developments. Uh, the analysts that you know are the thought leaders, uh, um, the partner programs you know across hardware platforms and, and other software companies. Um, it's, it was just a great ecosystem, um, and I just really enjoy the, the, the people part of it too. And, and uh, I'm a people person, so yeah, I, yeah. having that connection uh, was uh, was an important part of my journey for sure. Um, but those connections and, and knowledge, uh, you know, was the other part of it besides. The business learnings and, and you know launching this company co-create, um, you know, getting the connections and stuff, and being able to think about, yeah, you know, can we do more of things I really enjoy doing, and you know stepped outside of co-create and went from you know HP forty thousand person company to co-create a six hundred ish person company to a one person company yeah, that, yeah, yeah. that uh, over the years has grown to about twelve. So nice. It's uh, you know that's uh, and it's still fun. I mean this is a big yeah. part of it. You know. So teach us about Smart to Market's offering. So uh, we're pretty broad in our offering as far as uh, what we do in the, in the marketing space. We're uh, uh, delivering uh, very high level strategic uh, planning, messaging, branding type uh, 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 solutions and consulting uh, all the way through, I call it the, the, the grunt word of, of marketing. You know, we're developing websites, mm-hmm. uh, white papers, um, mm-hmm. Uh, digital marketing, uh, PR campaigns. Uh, so we're, you know, uh, unlike just a consulting firm, we actually do, you know, execution of, of, of mm-hmm. marketing. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of our clients, uh, we act as what we call as a virtual director of marketing. So we bring a team, you know, that have all these different disciplines that can, you know, uh, basically be a marketing department uh, at a much lower risk to uh, yeah. a client than having to staff and yeah. manage yes, and yes, fund, yes. you know, not just the direct cost, but there's, you know, there's the need to have the right people and train and manage. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, yeah. you know, to have an effective marketing team, there's a lot of uh, uh, cost and energy that goes into that. And we can kind of deliver this as a, you know, as a service, as a package. Uh, other Only cases. for engineering software or for more fields? So our focus, so we very broad range of services, but yeah, our, our focus, uh, with few exceptions, is uh, clients that are in this uh, engineering solution space, okay. including hardware. So we've worked with you know big companies like HP and Microsoft, cool, cool, uh, yeah. but their solution space in uh, the engineering gotcha. uh, focused areas yes. and AEC too. Gotcha. Okay, so all so all engineering solutions, you're helping them on that this intelligently figure out how to um, go to market, uh, websites, sales, all different aspects of marketing, this right. type of stuff. Yeah, we now, say we say yeah. uh, you know, we help our clients know, reach, and motivate their target customers. So, who is your customer? You know, and what do they look like? Yeah, uh, yeah. How do you make contact with them? And when you're in contact with them, how do you motivate them to see what you do? Brings value, and you know, ultimately get them to you know, uh, be a customer. And give us an example of an engineering solution that you've worked with that has got you've helped get into the right hands of people. 
So um, actually one that kind of ties to this area uh, back uh, several years back was uh, a company called Engineered Intelligence and they were a small company that actually was uh, one of the few that we work with in Colorado. Most of our clients are somewhere else in the US or the world. Um, but uh, Engineered Intelligence uh, was a, a company that uh, had a really interesting uh, solution for high performance computing uh, and cluster computing. Uh, they basically had a, uh, um, a virtualization of Cluster, so you could have a, uh, a machine that looks like a cluster. Uh, so people that are de developing for parallel processing type applications uh, had a, uh, a sim simple single way that they could develop code for that was separated from the actual hardware environment. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, they did very well. Uh, they got uh, VC funded, moved to uh, California here to the Bay Area, and then uh, uh, later were acquired and, and you know as a part of the exit strategy. Uh, but uh, that's you know um, one one of many examples, but kind yeah. of cool. You know, it started with a very small organization. They got you know funded. They made the big move, and you know, uh, and you know, uh, went on to other you know great things. So, and then P, what would you say have been some of the as you've been doing this for what is it 18, 18 years now? Crazy with engineering solutions. What have been some of the trends that engineering solutions are moving towards? Well, clearly, uh, you know, today, cloud, uh, mm -hmm. and it's, uh, it's interesting. I was talking with uh, John McElhaney with Onshape, of course. They have a really cool cloud s solution for uh, design uh, and engineering. Uh, uh, and it wasn't that long ago, if you were to talk to companies and organizations and individuals, uh, especially engineers, you know, the idea of, of you know, uh, not having your data on your, you know, workstation and, and you know, keeping control of it. Uh, that was, you know, a, a serious cultural, you know, uh, you know, a conversation ten years ago. You know, if all the technology were there to do what it could do today, uh, the mindsets were, you know, very uh, opposed to, you know, putting data out, out in the cloud. And uh, so there's a generational thing going on now. Uh, obviously, technology has moved where, you know, we have, uh, you know, personal devices that have access to compute power that's just beyond what you, you know, we might have imagined you know, 10, 20 years ago. Um, and of course, that's driving a, lo a lot of change in, you know, in our space here, in the engineering software space. Uh, you know, everybody is either there or moving to there with some part of their solution, if not all of their solution, you know, in the cloud. So that's clearly a, a platform enabler that, that's making some big changes. Um, you know, the other things that I've seen that uh, are exciting just over the years is the you know, usability of solutions. Um, and uh, so Joe Walsh, the Assess uh, uh, project that he's leading, uh, is looking at how you know simulation is is not for just the analysts that you know know how to create a finite element model, but really bringing that kind of capability to, to the masses. Yes. And uh, SolidWorks, one of our clients, uh, has got some really cool things with their simulation products, where a designer, you know, has a, a great toolkit. You know that. Uh, not that long ago, uh, you know, your general engineer or designer would probably not uh, be able to, you know, use those kinds of functions effectively and, and confidently. That's the other thing is, you know, having some confidence in the results that you get at the end of the process. Yeah, this these solutions <laughs> that they, that you're listing right now are are you know democratizing um, the, the one's ability to do generative design or to do um, simulate engineering simulations um, taking that and giving it to the hands of, of kids or uh, or young adults adolescents mm -hmm. and 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 collegiate students and then having their creative potential roll off with it is is, is such a crucial part of this also yeah all of the all of what you were saying with um, with algorithms that are now running our computations in the cloud it's a very it's a much crazy um, thing than what we thought was just going to be happening locally. How do we know right. our data is secure? All these types of questions arise from these questions from these from these new processes. So now, okay, so now you're you're following you're following these engineering solutions as they're as they're building up, and you're you're providing them with the, you know really powerful marketing marketing ways to ways to market. Um, in this sort of you know this. Two and a half years now, board of directors, COFES. COFES is, you know, aggregating this these, this beautiful community of leaders in the engineering software community. What is what is you know? You gave some examples of what Joe Walsh is doing with Sess Initiative, and we were just talking about some other ones. Mm -hmm. 
where is this where is this converging? Where is this converging and going towards? You know, the democratization, all these other things. But where do you really? Where do you feel that the essence of this is moving us in the direction towards? You mean uh, you're talking about COFES, or you're talking about the industry? COFES plus what COFES is able to highlight from industry. Yeah, together. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh, um, you know, COFES now uh, as a nonprofit under the uh, COFES Institute um, is uh, you know it's important that we look at you know, our ability to encompass more than just, you know, the CAD software space. And, and, uh, uh, and that's clearly where uh, COFES began in, in the AEC and, and the product development uh, CAD software space. Uh, the challenges that are, you know, faced by people developing products or buildings today are getting more and more complex, obviously. Yes. Uh, and so the kinds of things that COFES can do as a community and the people that come together whether they're the analyst thought leader types, the people that are developing, you know, the actual engineering software, the visionary users, uh, the uh, editors that are writing about it, uh, the VCs that are, you know, funding, you know, the next great thing. Yeah. Um, they all come together to COFES, and, and uh, uh, so the conversations that happen here uh, clearly go well beyond CAD. It's, it's, and this is what the convergence theme was about this year. Is is you know, uh, augmented reality, virtual reality, yeah. uh, machine learning and AI, um, uh, uh, autonomous vehicles, um, yeah. IoT, yeah. all these uh, elements of uh, different parts of technology have created brand new opportunities that, you know, were you know, not there, you know, not that long ago that yes, when you're yes. developing a product or a building, and by the way, I see those lines blurring, you know, you know is it AEC or is it product development where there's, you know, there's smart buildings. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, there's uh, tons of mechanical and, and product innovations that go into buildings beyond just the architectural design. And so there's just, yeah, there's a culmination of this convergence across um, all aspects of what we're talking about. So from the Institute, COFAS Institute perspective, we want to, you know, make sure that we're casting a broader net that you know, incorporates all that and takes advantage of this brain trust that comes to COFAS and, and really get discussions going around, you know, what is truly the future of engineering software that you know needs to be addressing uh, these challenges and, and you know take advantage of the new opportunities that are there with you know all of things like IoT. I mean, yeah. who would have thought yeah. uh, you know ten years ago uh, the things that are connected uh, that are connected today and you know thinking ahead five years from now uh, the the numbers. Uh, that were shared of how many devices will be connected yeah. or just is like just beyond the number of people in the world. So it's uh, it's pretty amazing and it's just, uh, I don't know, it's an exciting ride to be on. It's a true, what well, you're just saying, the biological perception <coughs> evolution, now we have a robotic perception evolution happening. This is, this is nuts. It's, it's yeah. in, Kofez's Brain Trust is one of the most fascinating yet. I really highly recommend um, checking out Kofez's links below. Last question, Pete. What would be a really important skill for kids and adults to learn in the 21st century? Uh, Communication, you know, technology is great, uh, but uh, where I've seen, you know, the most successful uh, enterprises is, is really, you know, having, you know, that technology savvy, but being able to communicate, you know, and and uh, uh, and being human beings, you know, uh, uh, at the end of the day, uh, you know, I'm drawn to technology as much as anyone, you know, you're, you know, pushing the buttons all the time, but. Uh, but don't forget, uh, we're human beings, and that interaction that, uh, uh, like COFES, is a perfect example. When you get people together and, and the conversations happen, uh, not that you can't communicate in other vehicles, but uh, I certainly hope we never lose that face-to-face, -face, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. human being interaction that, yeah, yeah. that uh, I think really does help us break through barriers and, and become more innovative and, and solve bigger problems. Yeah, yeah, well said. Thank you so much for coming on to the show and teaching us. Well, thank you for Huge do what you do. Thank you. Yeah, we have so many brilliant people to continue highlighting. We really appreciate everyone for tuning in. Thank you so much. Check out Pete's links below. Check out the links to Kofes as well. Support the artists and entrepreneurs that you believe in. Support Kofes. Support Simulation. Our links are below. Also, go and build the future, everyone. Share this type of content with more people. Get inspired. Manifest your dreams into the world. Huge thank you for tuning in, and we will see you soon. Peace.